Welcome to the One Year Bible, July 12. The Old Testament reading, 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 19, through chapter 14, verse 17. Some men from Manasseh defected from the Israelite army and joined David when he set out with the Philistines to fight against Saul. But as it turned out, the Philistine rulers refused to let David and his men go with them. After much discussion, they sent them back, for they said, It will cost us our heads if David switches loyalties to Saul and turns against us. Here is a list of the men from Manasseh who defected to David as he was returning to Ziklag. Adna, Josabad, Jadiel, Michael, Josabad, Elihu, and Zelethi. Each commanded 1,000 troops from the tribe of Manasseh. They helped David chase down bands of raiders, for they were all brave and able warriors who became commanders in his army. Day after day, more men joined David until he had a great army, like the army of God. These are the numbers of armed warriors who joined David at Hebron. They were all eager to see David become king instead of Saul, just as the Lord had promised. From the tribe of Judah, there were 6,800 warriors armed with shields and spears. From the tribe of Simeon, there were 7,100 brave warriors. From the tribe of Levi, there were 4,600 warriors. This included Jehoiada, leader of the family of Aaron, who had 3,700 under his command. This also included Zadok, a brave young warrior with 22 members of his family who were all officers. From the tribe of Benjamin, Saul's relatives, there were 3,000 warriors. Most of the men from Benjamin had remained loyal to Saul until this time. From the tribe of Ephraim, there were 20,800 brave warriors, each highly respected in his own clan. From the half-tribe of Manasseh, west of the Jordan, 18,000 men were designated by name to help David become king. From the tribe of Issachar, there were 200 leaders of the tribe with their relatives. All these men understood the signs of the times and knew the best course for Israel to take. From the tribe of Zebulun, there were 50,000 skilled warriors. They were fully armed and prepared for battle and completely loyal to David. From the tribe of Naphtali, there were 1,000 officers and 37,000 warriors armed with shields and spears. From the tribe of Dan, there were 28,600 warriors, all prepared for battle. From the tribe of Asher, there were 40,000 trained warriors, all prepared for battle. From the east side of the Jordan River, where the tribes of Reuben and Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh lived, there were 120,000 troops armed with every kind of weapon. All these men came in battle array to Hebron with the single purpose of making David the king over all Israel. In fact, everyone in Israel agreed that David should be their king. They feasted and drank with David for three days, for preparations had been made by their relatives for their arrival and people from as far away as Issachar, Zebulun, and Naphtali brought food on donkeys, camels, mules, and oxen. Vast supplies of flour, fig cakes, clusters of raisins, wine, olive oil, cattle, sheep, and goats were brought to the celebration. There was great joy throughout the land of Israel. David consulted with all his officials, including the generals and captains of his army. Then he addressed the entire assembly of Israel as follows. If you approve, and if it is the will of the Lord our God, let us send messages to all the Israelites throughout the land, including the priests and Levites in their towns and pasture lands. Let us invite them to come and join us. It is time to bring back the ark of our God, for we neglected it during the reign of Saul. The whole assembly agreed to this, for the people could see that it was the right thing to do. So David summoned all Israel, from the Shehor brook of Egypt in the south, all the way to the town of Libo Hamath in the north, 
to join in bringing the Ark of God from Kiriath-Jerim. Then David and all Israel went to Bala of Judah, also called Kiriath-Jerim, to bring back the Ark of God, which bears the name of the Lord, who is enthroned between the cherubim. They placed the Ark of God on a new cart and brought it from Abinadab's house. Utsa and Ahio were guiding the cart. David and all Israel were celebrating before God with all their might, singing songs and playing all kinds of musical instruments, lyres, harps, tambourines, cymbals, and trumpets. But when they arrived at the threshing floor of Nacon, the oxen stumbled, and Utsa reached out his hand to steady the ark. Then the Lord's anger was aroused against Utsa, and he struck him dead, because he had laid his hand on the ark. So Utsa died there in the presence of God. David was angry because the Lord's anger had burst out against Utsa. He named that place Perez Utsa, which means to burst out against Utsa, as it is still called today. David was now afraid of God, and he asked, How can I ever bring the ark of God back into my care? So David did not move the ark into the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of Obed-Edom of Gath. The ark of God remained there in Obed-Edom's house for three months, and the Lord blessed the household of Obed-Edom and everything he owned. Then King Hiram of Tyre sent messengers to David, along with cedar timber and stonemasons and carpenters to build him a palace. And David realized that the Lord had confirmed him as king over Israel and had greatly blessed his kingdom for the sake of his people Israel. Then David married more wives in Jerusalem, and they had more sons and daughters. These are the names of David's sons who were born in Jerusalem. Shamua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ipar, Elishua, Elpelet, Noga, Nepheg, Japhia, Elishama, Eliada, and Eliphelet. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all Israel, they mobilized all their forces to capture him. But David was told they were coming, so he marched out to meet them. The Philistines arrived and made a raid in the valley of Rephaim. So David asked God, Should I go out to fight the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? The Lord replied, Yes, go ahead. I will hand them over to you. So David and his troops went up to Baal Perazim and defeated the Philistines there. God did it, David exclaimed. He used me to burst through my enemies like a raging flood. So they named that place Baal Perazim, which means the Lord who burst through. The Philistines had abandoned their gods there, so David gave orders to burn them. But after a while, the Philistines returned and raided the valley again. And once again, David asked God what to do. Do not attack them straight on, God replied. Instead, circle around behind and attack them near the poplar trees. When you hear a sound like marching feet in the tops of the poplar trees, go out and attack. That will be the signal that God is moving ahead of you to strike down the Philistine army. So David did what God commanded, and they struck down the Philistine army all the way from Gibeon to Gezer. So David's fame spread everywhere, and the Lord caused all the nations to fear David. The New Testament reading Romans chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. This letter is from Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, chosen by God to be an apostle and sent out to preach his good news. God promised this good news long ago through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The good news is about his son. In his earthly life, he was born into King David's family line, and he was shown to be the Son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Through Christ, God has given us the privilege and authority as apostles to tell Gentiles everywhere what God has done for them so that they will believe and obey Him, bringing glory to His name. And you are included among those Gentiles who have been called to belong to Jesus Christ. I am writing to all of you in Rome who are loved by God and are called to be His own holy people. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Let me say first that I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith in Him is being talked about all over the world. God knows how often I pray for you. Day and night I bring you and your needs in prayer to God, whom I serve with all my heart by spreading the good news about His Son. One of the things I always pray for is the opportunity, God willing, to come at last to see you. For I long to visit you so I can bring you some spiritual gift that will help you grow strong in the Lord. When we get together, I want to encourage you in your faith, but I also want to be encouraged by yours. I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, that I planned many times to visit you, but I was prevented until now. I want to work among you and see spiritual fruit, just as I have seen among other Gentiles. For I have a great sense of obligation to people in both the civilized world and the rest of the world, to the educated and uneducated alike. So I am eager to come to you in Rome, too, to preach the good news. For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ, It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. This good news tells us how God makes us right in His sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. Psalm 9, verses 13 through 20. Lord, have mercy on me. See how my enemies torment me. Snatch me back from the jaws of death. Save me so I can praise you publicly at Jerusalem's gates, so I can rejoice that you have rescued me. The nations have fallen into the pit they dug for others. Their own feet have been caught in the trap they set. The Lord is known for His justice. The wicked are trapped by their own deeds. The wicked will go down to the grave. This is the fate of all the nations who ignore God. But the needy will not be ignored forever. The hopes of the poor will not always be crushed. Arise, O Lord! Do not let mere mortals defy you. Judge the nations. Make them tremble in fear, O Lord. Let the nations know they are merely human. Proverbs 19, verses 4 and 5 Wealth makes many friends. Poverty drives them all away. A false witness will not go unpunished, nor will a liar escape.